Well, hello and welcome to this week's podcast. The uh, the uh, observant among you may notice that we are short-handed this week, uh, but it's only for a short amount of times. James has been uh, waylaid, and he is coming. We are we've been told so you know stick around and he'll turn up at some point so don't go away you know all you James Burns fans just because there's only got five of us here he is coming at some point so uh, he's in the yeah. limo he's in the limo as we as we speak yeah the, the, the bouncers at the door of the yeah. pub he's not letting him in uh, <laughs> some issue with Boris I don't know exactly what it is anyway anyway oh, so uh, okay, so yeah. how's everyone been how's everyone week how is everyone's week been <laughs> <laughs> got that out what? say that again yeah oh, look, look, let's be honest let's be honest right we've been waiting for 40 minutes for James well actually yeah, we, we've been on it for an hour and we've started drinking an hour ago so you can yeah. probably tell that yeah, things this isn't going to go quite, well no yeah. things aren't quite as fluid as they should be we're probably too fluid anyway <laughs> how has everyone's week been has anyone got anything they want to say that's what I was trying to get across well yeah, it's been it's been a good week. First week back for me, full on working and all that business, and a uh, bit of bit of woodage. Went out, did a bit of woodage early on this week. Saw a bit of bush, a few bit trees, of bit of wood, mm, bit of wooden bush. Can't be bad. <laughs> Can't be bad. Lovely. I took. I tell you what, I took today. I took some. Um, I was still quite high on the general anaesthetic from last night. But this morning, perhaps I should have more of this general anaesthetic because this morning I got some cracking images of a, a fox cub in my back garden. Yeah, oh, yeah, saw that. They mm. are, they, are, yeah. Do you see that one? That mm. was a few days ago, but today it came back, and I sat there and processed them. Oh, mate, they're crackers. They really are. So I'm all geared up for tomorrow. I go out there in the morning, at about four o'clock in the morning, sprinkle some dog food at both ends of the garden and then just sit there and wait but I will I'll show you that I'll show you these images so pleased with them so where's the den then where are they coming from do you know yeah there's a place just over the back of us um it's kind of like a like a bit of a manor thing kind of go it's not it's not a manor house it's like a thing kind of going on um and I'm sure they're in there because the other day this little fox cub it took me by surprise i was sitting in the back room with the door shut and i just saw it at the corner of my eye i didn't have no curtains drawn and it came right up to the back door and it, it was four foot from me walked straight by me went back out in the garden i had the lights on i was in full view and then i opened the back doors didn't move but he kind of walked off into to, to some plants and I quickly went to the, the fridge, got out some meat, and I started throwing it onto the onto the lawn. And he came back, picked up a, a few bits of meat, picked up some more, and as I chucked it for the second time, it landed too close to him, and he bolted. And he hit the fence at the back of the garden. <laughs> so there must be a hole somewhere that he goes through or jumps over, I don't know, but... He hit this fence at a rate of knots, and I didn't think I'd see him again. But he did. He came back this morning. So, what what dog food though? Pedigree chum. No, Helen bought some because she knew I was going to feed the fox. So she just bought some. I don't know what it is. Cheap and cheerful, yeah, cha chappy or something. You know, definitely a crack fox. Then definitely yeah. he's living at council estate there off pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, smacking up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that sounds really good. The highlight of my week is replacing the gas strut on this chair. Oh. I mean, that was it. <laughs> it. No, it actually was a genuine highlight because I figured I go through about a chair every twelve months. That's about a hundred quid a year, and it, well, they gradually go down. What, so what are you I was doing on up, the chair? Just sitting on it, but they go after a while. <laughs> yeah, this is it. Stop it, Tigger. Tigger, stop it. <laughs> while, you, while you're down there. No, but... <laughs> it, it, so, but anyway, I discovered that they're replaceable. So you could buy a gas strut for a tenner on Amazon. Oh. The, actually, unwedging this one was a bit of a headache, but that was a highlight of my week. That's how miserable life is around here at the moment. Oh, so you're you, you're allowed out on Monday, Dave? Is that right? 
We're to, allowed to out play. to all the places that are currently shut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that by and large are staying shut. I checked things like Newborough, for example. It says, uh, yes, uh, the trails, forest trails are open for the locals to walk on them. But the, the main beach, car park and all that is, is showing no signs of opening at all. And it makes you wonder. I mean, they're talking about attracting people over to restart the tourism industry. But there's nothing for the tourists to do. So who's going to want to come here? Plus the fact they've already booked for Cornwall if they're, or Cumbria. Well, to be yeah, fair, so they, really could, the they, they could have a bit of fun avoiding the locals' pitchforks, couldn't they? That would be, you know, <laughs> have a bit of car racing, you know, getting chased up, chased off the get off my land type thing yeah. or whatever that is in Welsh. Has, um, has the National Trust reopened yet? Yeah. Everywhere. Uh, don't know about well, Wales. Not Wales, I guess. I, until think, Monday. I think they've reopened their outdoor spaces. I'm not sure if they've reopened That's like right, their yeah, stately yeah. homes and bits and pieces like that, yeah, but yeah. I'm pretty sure all of their outdoor spaces have been open for quite a while, actually. You have yeah. to right. book spaces in the car parks, I think, don't you, in advance? I know for Wick and Fender and near us, you have yeah. to book, book the car park if you that want to go was there. The, yeah, the last time I was over at Wick and Fen, I think, was about three weeks ago. And then you had, not that I was using the car park anyway, I don't need to, but that then you had to book the book the car park. But I didn't know in recent weeks, with what with pubs reopening tomorrow, has like National Trust kind of just reopened up again and I've just missed an email. Yeah, which is well, a I, curiosity. I was going to say, you know, if, the, uh, if, if the, the car parks for the National Trust are opening slightly too late for you, just pull up in a pub car park from 6am in the morning, you'll be fine, won't you? Mm-hmm. you know, 6am is far too late yeah. for me. 6am, I'm coming home. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, I mean, what's that What's that all about? Now, listen, listen, this is Boris. Listen, I want you to all to be very sensible and not go out and do anything silly, all right, when we reopen the pubs. But, but bear in mind, I'm going to open them from 6am in the morning. <laughs> doesn't make any sense anyway no no more political stuff <laughs> didn't you want to say something mally about um you had a you had a comment on a on a post you put on facebook oh so as in true mally style um thought i'd share where i'm going to be sat to record this tonight that are behind the scenes you know and adele warner dropped a message saying are you guys going to carry on doing this so what are our thoughts because the pandemic is is is, st- is still a pan it's still a bit of you know there's there's definitely it's not good so i don't think we're going to be stopping for quite some time but regardless of of viruses uh sheep farmers with pitchforks um nick livesley chasing dave off his land with a drone or darren getting meat on his meat with a fox I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> yeah, no, we, you notice we're all just sort of leaving it to you as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one's thinking we better save Mally here. No, we can carry no. on, mate. We're going to but... carry on. We're not. We're, this isn't just a pandemic thing. That, that, that's no. the question no. I think Adele is asking, and she's a regular watcher. Thanks, Adele. Thank the first you. thing to say as well is if, if you're not subscribed to Adele's, uh, is it Adele and a friend as well? Max, yes. Adele and Max, Adele and Max. Max. Adele and Max. Yeah, if you're yeah. not subscribed to their channel, get over there because they are they're a great couple of vloggers. They yeah. produce Northern, good content. Northern, Northwest, Northwest Wiggins. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they're lovely. <laughs> they're lovely people as well. And uh, yeah. you know, I've had a couple of messages from Adele. You know, and you know, and Max. And Did yeah, she say hello? Yeah. <laughs> Gary done a lovely rendition. Yeah, we did. Yeah. He did a lovely rendition of that earlier. Yeah, yeah go on, Gary. I was wondering if you're going to continue the podcast. Um, no, yes. Anyway, they're, they're lovely people. So, yes, definitely, if you get the opportunity, go and check out their channel. Uh, maybe put a link in the description for you um, if we're feeling generous. And I'll tell you what I've noticed about our uh, little channel, actually. We seem to get a lot more views than we do subscribers. So if anybody's watching this that does watch it on a regular basis but it's not yet subscribed, then please consider subscribing and tapping that little notification bell. Ding, ding. Ding, Can ding. Can I that as well? If there's anyone out there that watches the Fortinets, they're not on. Sorry, Gary, Paul and Gareth. So come on. Yeah. Come over and subscribe. You, you're you missing know, out. You're missing I out. went on to the photo nerds the other day because I thought, oh, have, have, have I missed anything over there? Because I'm not, you know, I haven't seen anything. But I think it was about three months ago since they 
because they've not done it like we have virtual, have they? They they obviously they actually meet up. But I just wondered if I'd missed something. It's a shame. I'm sure they could do their the photo nodes virtual. So yeah. are we say are we saying in answer to the question then? Yes, we're going to carry on. Is that the consensus? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yes, I forgot all absolutely. about that. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So, so yes. really, Sorry. what it boils it just boils down to an excuse for excessive home drinking, doesn't it? <laughs> <Pretty> <laughs> exactly. Much, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. What what yeah, you guys we, don't what you guys don't get to see is that yeah. we we actually don't like each other at all. This is just all an excuse so we can just get pissed on a Friday night. Well, yes, of course. Yeah. And if we were in the same pub, it would always end up in a punch-up, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, wouldn't exactly. that be good? <laughs> yeah, but a good kebab on the way home would be nice Walking as well. on with oh, me yeah. and round you, shoving kebab in your eyeballs. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you, mate. I love you. <laughs> yeah. No, we're definitely going to carry on with this without a shadow of a doubt. I think we've all, you know, all of us say offline and online how much that... You know, the Friday nights, we look forward to it. After a, a week of either work or not work or lockdown or furlough or whatever you're in, you know, just having this Friday night chat with, with the friend. And I know we share it to the community and online, but to us, it's just blokes down a pub and mates down a pub having a catch up and a bit of a bit of a banter. And it's brilliant. Yeah, but really that James, what, that yeah. James, what a git. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, we had to well, we had to get rid of him. We cut off his yeah. feed. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to be able to talk about him behind his back without Absol- him ever finding out what Absolutely. we're saying. <laughs> them hats, mate. Them hats that he wears—they're just ridiculous. I don't know what he's Woody. thinking of. Would he? I mean, yeah. I mean, while, while he's not on here, we probably should not mention as well that you know his nickname in the group is the Lakeland Grinch. He is you the Lakeland Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But we'd never share yeah. that with anyone. We? No, we won't no. share that with anyone. No. We won't share that with yeah. or, or Malcolm the Mollusk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's not me. Guilty, yeah, guilty of it. Mally, what are you, Mally? You're Mally Strongbow Davis, aren't you? I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's not changed. No. And I, I, I'm Jamie IPA Overlord, and the Overlord is, and if Gary Goff, if you're watching this, the Overlord ah. is particularly because you keep calling me Jamie Overlord on your yeah. channel. So that's that was funny. Like that. that was very good. So yeah. funny. Every time Gary get and and you do, you go on, and he'll do it just as you're in the chat. And I, <laughs> oh, oh, Overlord's popped up in the chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, I don't okay. take it to heart. No, of course not. Of course not. So no. we were gonna we were gonna have a chat tonight, weren't we? We've been obviously because we have our little we have our little off off channel chats uh, during the week, and we were going to talk about our photography room one hundred and one and what we would send into that room. So um, we've all had a time, bit of a time to think. Uh, now was it photography? Oh, I haven't got a photography topic for Room 101. Well, I've just got a Room 101 it, topic it, that it, I want to put in. It can be anything. Don't change the rules now. Yeah. Well, all right. Okay. I, I thought it was photography, to be honest. Oh, we, right. are got, we are called the photography podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I picked something photography, but it doesn't have to be photography, you know what I mean? Anyway, so, so seeing as it was Darren's idea, I think Darren really yeah. should kick us off. So yeah. go on then, mate. What 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 is it that you're going to put into Room 101 in terms of photography? <laughs> right, what? No, not, not really for two, just joking just pick whatever you want what I'd like to put into room 101 is people who pick up dog shit who pick it up or don't pick it up who do pick it up now don't get me wrong right I, I always do but what someone's you? but someone's stepping in yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't pick up strangers. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't follow someone around with a bag. But don't you remember the good old days? Wasn't stepping in dog shit the best oh, leveller kicking, ever? Kicking weight, weight dog shit. And you, people used to kind of, if you was in like, like two scenarios, if you was in your own home, like, you know, your family home, and then someone would say, there's someone trotting dog shit here. <laughs> and everyone would be checking them. Well, it's not me. I mean, are you sure it's not you? And then someone would get it on the bus. Or if you was in like a, a, a pub when you didn't quite know people, but you could smell it, you know, and then no one could actually say, is anyone trodden in dog shit? <laughs> so, yeah, so for me, I want to go back to the good old days when dog shit on the bottom of the shoe was a leveller. So anyone that picks up dog shit, I'd like to put them in room 101. You just give me my 101 there. Can I go next? Go on, well, man. hang on a minute, hang on no, a minute. We, well, need you, to, you we, need, we need to decide. Well, no, no. Whether... 
Oh, sorry, you got to well, decide whether you're going to yeah. allow me to. Yeah. Well, well, can we do that at the end? Do we not decide I, at the end? I, Is that I, not how it works? Yeah. I don't watch no, the you programme, have to, so I ain't got a clue. You have to decide now, and yeah. then you move on to the, to the next one. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to go quick here, and I'm going to say I'm with Darren. Because I can't stand it when you're walking through a woodland or a forest, or, and there's these little black bags hanging with shit in them. Yeah. So don't pick it up. Let it turn to dust and go back to nature. As, you know, I'm you shaking my head. I'm sorry, I'm shaking my head. The reason I wanted to go next is because my 101 was poo bags. <gasps> so he's nicked it. <laughs> no, no. Well, you no. can come on. So that. we'll have you to go can... together on this one, Darren. So uh, can we do it together and then you select it? Because my 101 was related to that, but it was about people that don't that pick it up, stick it in a poo bag, yeah. and then leave it on a bloody woodland path. You know, when you're out with your camera, relating it to photography, as we're supposed to be doing. So when you're out there with your camera, walking on a woodland path, and there's poo bags on the floor. What's all that about? Or yeah. on a branch. It's on worse, a branch. It's worse on, on a branch. A on, on a poo a bag Christmas tree. Yeah. Like a pair of Shirley Bass's earrings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what you guys are saying is you, you'd rather just let the dog shit on the floor, leave it, let other people walk in it, bring yep. it through the pub, yep. bring it in their yep. car. Yeah. Get home, get, get home. the knife out the cutlery drawer, and, yeah. dig it out your trainers. As long as that, it's not me. I mean, I don't want it, but my wife, you know, if she treads, it, she, she treads in it, then that's funny for me with her in the back garden digging it all out of her. Tra- yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> well, you can also <laughs> guess the dog. Guess the dog. Oh, that's a great Dan. Oh, that yeah. was. <laughs> yeah. 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 Guess the dog food. Yeah, yeah. There's, 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 Is it the white, the white ones as well? They got more. You calcium don't get them. You don't get them Bones, anymore, do you? The white white ones. Ones. I, I no. think, yeah, the white no. one is is the food, isn't it? The the feed is just not the same anymore. So, yeah. if if it maybe maybe if there was still if there was still the potential for for white dog shit, I might go with it. I might go with it just for nostalgia. Yeah. But I'm not keen but on stepping in it. Honestly. You're not. It's, no, 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 it's not, it's not my. Going you're down. no fun. Going in. Yeah, it's not going for it. Carries well, the, the caller. So are we, still, are we still picking it up then? Dave, well, how, come on, how mate. How about if we pick it up and deposit it somewhere we don't like? Would, would that be acceptable? Put it outside someone else's door if bring, we don't bring like it, it Bring it to my house, is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Post it through your letterbox. No, can I tell you a story about a shovel and shit? Go on. <laughs> There's nothing as satisfying as scraping a dog shit up with a shovel and flinging it as far as you can. It's great fun. Is that the story? On on that subject, (laughs) when when we uh, first moved to Anglesey and we had a couple of dogs at the time, Labradors, and so they would produce about five tonnes of shit on a weekly basis. So what we did was we went to the bucket and spade shop next door to where we first lived. We got a long-handled kiddie spade for making sandcastles with the flickage you can get on that oh. is epic <laughs> oh yeah now we live where we live the lovely mrs g's got an arm like popeyes from, <laughs> from, <laughs> we kept the shovel and the next dog inherited it and it's very satisfying <laughs> this isn't it a... uh, but our dog he comes out every morning steps outside at the back door where i where i sit and he always turns his back on me and has a crap. He always looks away from me and every day I end up staring. It's, it's like a magnet. I don't want to watch it, but I just you just look at it and you just think, I can't believe he's... Look at the size of it, you know? And then I just think, why am I watching this? It's disgusting. <laughs> I'm not I'm sure which would be worse, though. The look on its, if you turn the other way, the look on his face while he's curling one out probably. <laughs> Why are we having this conversation? <laughs> James, what <laughs> year was this? Come on. Sorry, right, okay, yeah. We should be watching where's, this over there. Where's James? Where's, where's James? where's James when you need him? Poo up. bags and poo going in room 101, do we think? No, because they're not going in room... Oh, yes, they are, aren't they? Poo bags and people who pick up poo going in room 101. Well, I'm voting against it, I'm sorry. You're I, not I putting think, it in, girl. No, I think they need to be picked up. I just, oh, yeah. I don't know my shoe. Hang on, um, but pick, picked up, mine is being picked up put in a poo bag but don't leave the poo bags behind take them home with you put the people who put Shirley Bassey's poo bag pee, um, pee pings in a tree 
We'll put them. We can put yes. them in room one or one. Put Thank the you. people who oh, do the poo bags. Co- compromise. Thank compromise. You. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. So, so Darren, no. <laughs> right. Essentially, Jamie. All right then. I guess. Yeah. All right. Who's next? Go on then, Dave. Come on. Your your turn. What have you got? Okay. Um, on the basis that I wasn't tipped off, I've come up with something very short notice. So you'll have to forgive me that it's extremely lame. But let me paint you a picture. Um, you get an opportunity to go to somewhere like Canada, for example. You fly into Calgary and you drive up to Banff and you stop in a nice lodge. And a local guide takes you out to do landscape photography and he gives you some snowshoes and you trek up into the mountains. Uh, and unfortunately, the guide slips, breaks his leg, you're scuppered. You've got to try and find some rescue. You, you've, you've got to maybe head back, you don't know which direction to go in. Uh, Will you be able to save his life or not? In landscape photography terms, that's an adventure. Pitching up at your local duck pond and saying, (laughs) I'm here for a landscape photography adventure. (laughs) It's not an adventure, it's a landscape photography (laughs) shoot, sorry. (laughs) So what I would put into room 101 are vloggers that open up in the first 30 seconds and say, thank you for joining me on my adventure. What about Thelmy? <laughs> Is that That's all it. right? Is Thelmy okay? Is that <laughs> Did you break your leg while you were there? Were you stranded overnight hoping not to die? Uh, no, but it was steeped in history, <laughs> Ali. <laughs> so, you know, Do you know, phrase. David, you said about this, and I hadn't edited my vlog and he owned me stems up, and the first stem I double clicked, it was me saying about my adventure. And I just Sorry cried, about that. I just cried laughing. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Along those lines, I will agree with you to a point, Dave. Along those lines, I had a, I had a big thing back when I was about sort of 15 years ago of people calling everything awesome. And I used to go, the Grand Canyon, that's awesome, right? The view of the Earth from the moon... That's awesome. Yeah, your trainers, not awesome. They're not all- this burger is not awesome. This night out is not awesome. Because you don't you don't you don't go and, and get and, and pick up a burger and go Darren's dog shit is awesome though. Yeah, my counts. dog shit story was awesome. <laughs> no, no that was trying- an adventure. I'm-, <laughs> I'm just trying to think if I've ever used that word. See I I I think I probably have. Not we all I, have. Not, not that I can remember a, a specific point in a video that I, I, I've used it, but it, it doesn't offend me. Unless Mally's laughing, unless I have said it, have I? <laughs> no, and no. You... I'm just imagining pulling. No, no. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I can't. Re- <laughs> but I do agree with the word awesome. I think that is overused. Awesome's okay. Quite, yeah. I, I awesome's think that's... awesome. No, yeah, awesome's, awesome's not awesome. awesome. The Grand Canyon's awesome. <laughs> I hate the. I used to get really wound up over it. I'm, I'm I'm a bit more mellow about it now, but yeah. But do you not think as well that we, why, because we we vlog, we also then when we look back, we actually realise that we do actually use the same words yeah. all the time. For the, the words that you you, you know you you didn't realise you use so much in day to day conversation. Because as soon as it's yeah. come out of your mouth, it's disappeared. It's floated off into the atmosphere somewhere. But when you watch your vlogs back, you think. Oh, I said that 20 times in one video. Yeah. What was the one that you did, Jay? What was the one that you did on the, the clouds? Drama. Oh, drama. Oh, drama. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. I, I must have, I must have <laughs> dramatised that about 100 bloody times. So, yeah, but I did make a point of it and put it in my titles. So that's what, that's the out. only reason that yeah. I really noticed it, because you, you did I've, kind of... I've done it, you, actually. I've got a vlog out tomorrow morning, if anybody's... Uh, not watched it. It'll be a lot of drama. Um, no, but I've used the word definitely, awesome? but I called myself out and said, "How many more times can you say definitely?" So <laughs> you know, if you realise you're saying it when you're recording it, you can call yeah. it out. And but there's a lot of people that you do watch that actually say a lot of words repeating it. I don't think they actually realise they say them and, until they watch them back. And by that point, absolutely. It's Honestly, I think there are quite a few people who don't realise that they say the same words over and over again. There's mm. there's there's a, f- a few guys I watch on YouTube, and and I play a little game of count the number of times that they say the same phrase. You know, I'm not going to mention any names because I don't. You know, I'm not that type of person. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it's um, 
it's like a tick isn't it i think it's like a like a nervous tick you know the one that i always used to do was i i, I watched myself back and i used to all the time is well i'm not sure what this is going to turn out like but we'll find out when we get it home <laughs> i used to do it all the time yeah. all the time and i'm Let's not being funny what we but can get. yeah 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 so what we can get adventure adventure the word adventure in vlogs does that go into room 101 no that can't go in (laughs) dave just sucked the life out of it if we let dave put that in mate then that's it we have to give up vlogging i'm kind of with david though even though i said it even though i said it myself because it's like the word epic and i think the the epic and, and adventure uh, 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 uh for a place where you're close to death <laughs> so what you're saying is, is you can't have an you can't have an epic adventure down your local pond. You know, unless you fell only, in only it if you're it. there overnight waiting to be rescued or something, or you find a body and you find out who yeah. done it. Now that yeah. would be an adventure. <laughs> yeah. No, but the, the thing is, I I love language, and it just strikes me as with awesome that it's being diluted as the years roll by, and and. I just find myself watching stuff and somebody says, well, thanks for joining my my adventure. They're stood by their bloody car boot, putting a backpack on. How do they even know it's an adventure yet? In the back garden, taking pictures of foxes. <laughs> In defence of myself, it was a big deal filming it. <laughs> that, that day was... It was. It's all present company accepted, of course. That goes uh, without saying. There would be an asterisk in the title. Uh, we don't talk about ourselves. It's <laughs> weird though, language, because the you know, the other one that used to wind me up so much is when someone you say is it after everything. So it'd be like, fair enough, right? If someone says it's raining outside, is it right? That's fine, yeah. But it's have people going, I'm going down the shop. Is it? I mean, is it? You mean are <laughs> you? It? Not, is We're it? a bit more negative in Wales. We say, isn't it? Yeah, isn't it? Oh, lovely day, isn't it? No. <laughs> See, we're miss- it's bloody we're raining missing, again. Uh, we're missing the mums and dads where you'd say, thingy. <laughs> and you'd get one of them right back at fed. That, that's what the problem is. Adventure. So next time I say it, I'm going to imagine David slinging me one round back at Ed. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other thought, that is. That's a, but, that's a, yeah, 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 I think he's right. Room on all one for okay, me. All right. what, 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 Jamie? No, I'm not so sure. I don't think the adventure word itself is that bad. I think if it would, <laughs> if it had been another word that we all say a lot, then yeah. But adventure, I don't know. I think we all go on an adventure, and some more than others in terms of where we go to, but. I'm not too keen on putting that in personally. I think it's uh, a bit, a bit of an overkill. I'm with I'm with Jamie, but does that mean because me and Jay are outvoted three to two because Woody's let us down and he's um, off playing oh, somewhere? No, I'm, but, I, I, I'm voting with you guys. I don't think it should go in. I don't every, think it should. Listen, honestly, oh, Dave, every time well I go rescued. out with my navigational skills, it's an adventure because <laughs> I don't know where I'm going or what I'm doing true. most of the time. So. So yeah, so that that one no, sorry, that one again is not going in. So we've had nothing just escaped, nothing going in yet. So no, no poo bags went in, didn't it? Oh, poo bags, yeah. Sorry, poo bags went. Poo bags went in. Yeah, okay. Go on then, Mally. What what have you got for us? I, I, you know, I, I've had so many all week, and now it's come <laughs> to the crunch. All I can all I can think about is waterproof pants. <laughs> What, like incontinent knickers? No, like if you're going out photography related, Darren. Oh, right. W- waterproof, so waterproof pants. Just just get on my nerves. I just think, I think if you're going to go out and you're going to get wet, just you, you're going to get wet. Waterproof pants don't stop you getting wet. And, and Oh, I like mine. I'm not convinced by them, mate, because <clears throat> a good waterproof jacket... Yes, but but pants. Because then, do you take them off when you've when you've finished and you get back to car? See, this is the problem, Aya. You've got to you've got to degown. You've got to take. And and do, do you put your waterproof pants over your pants? Do you do you no? Just just are get you talking no, pants I'm... in the American term or, or trousers? No, 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 about trousers, sir. Right, tra- trousers. right. Thank you, yeah. trousers. Okay. Yeah, that's why I thought we were talking oh, incontinent oh, that... pants to start with. <laughs> Just kind of filling yourself up, you know, as, I know as you're he likes hiking. A bit of rubber underwear, but this is taking <laughs> it too far. 
That's so do, not really... do you not do a lot of kneeling down then, Mally, when you're out? Well, this because is another thing. Because waterproof trousers for me are when you're kneeling down, aren't they? Because yeah, you're or not sitting getting down, wet yeah. knees or sitting down or whatever. Yeah. Nothing, yeah. nothing better than lying in a nice, moist, fern and, you know, a bit of floor, a bit of, bit of fawnage, bit of, bit of, you, you, your ass, you get up and you go, oh, my ass is wet, but it'll dry. <laughs> so, so, so what you're saying is, is if you if you get up and you you're not wearing waterproof trousers and your ass is wet, you really know you've been on an adventure. <laughs> an awesome an adventure. An awesome adventure. No, I did. I, I actually rub a bit of dog on. shit in and then you you you're laughing. I was gonna put Canon in room one hundred one. <laughs> oh, we had gear last week. But exactly. So mm. I've just thrown waterproof pants in because for me. If you're going out and it's raining, you're gonna get wet no matter what. The yeah, but Mally, times... you've been you've been up a mountain when it was horizontal rain. Yeah, and without waterproofs, okay, yes, on a nice warm summer's day, it's not a problem. But halfway up a mountain, you get very cold very quickly, and they'll save your life. The jacket would, but your pants won't save your dingly danglies, will they? <laughs> Let's face it. And you know when you said about going up Wales and it rained, I had a waterproof jacket on and waterproof pants, and my kahunas were like a pair of beach balls. <laughs> they, seriously, they may as well have been just floated around in the I remember that, yeah. Hour. I remember that, because when we went, all went back to the pub, I had waterproofs on and I took them and I was soaked to my pants. We sat there and had something to eat, and I just remember being so uncomfortable, soaked in my pants I was that day. Don't get me wrong, I agree, David. A good waterproof jacket, nice bit of a, you know, underneath vestige, and a nice bit of keep you warm, and a good waterproof and a hood. But no matter what you do, the down below gets soaked. Always, I've, I've gone through so many pants. And the down below no. always gets soaked, and I think no, I don't. Do I we do perhaps think... not spend enough? Is it perhaps that we spend a lot of money on waterproof jackets, but waterproof trousers? We go, ah, oh, now they'll be all right. We'll just spend yeah. a few less quid on that. Maybe if you bought a pair of really nice, expensive See, ones. I think walking round with a pair of like speedos or Bermudas on. <laughs> <laughs> and a good waterproof jacket, nice and your legs don't stop you, your body, let's face it. And you could walk round with pins out like that. With flip flops on. Yeah, no, no, get it, Rick, get it. We're not line. F4. We're not yeah. F4. <laughs> not Crocs. Crocs or I love my walking boots. Do you know? I got a new pair do you know I got a new pair of walking boots? Awesome. 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 Oh they're not awesome. They're awesome. <laughs> They do get, get they do on, get sweaty though, Mally. They I get agree. you on an adventure. They, if you're out with your waterproof trousers, not pants, you get you do get sweaty. You know, yeah. on, in the middle of winter, maybe I suppose they are when you really need them. But it if you don't wear work. them, look. Yeah, it never work for me. No matter how much I spend or wear or whatever. Now, uh, I saw someone with these seal skin socks. Yeah, I've got some of them. Have you? Yeah. Could you imagine making pants out of them? Like leggings. Like walking around see, like Max, I must, Max I, Wall. I, I wear, Max I, Wall. I, <laughs> I definitely can't let them in because I wear mine all the time. I wear them in the winter because they keep your legs warm because when that wind's blowing through, you've got another barrier mm -hmm. rather than going through your jeans. When it's spitting a rain, I must admit the day that we that we went up to uh, a Raran, no, it wasn't a Raran, it was a Raran, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, that was, you know, nothing was stopping that because that was torrential rain. But nine times out of ten, yeah, I, I think they're they're great. I wouldn't. They're always in my in my photography bag. Then well, my, my my waterproof trousers make me look a bit like MC Hammer, but <laughs> I, I <laughs> and not in a good way. And, but I've never there got, isn't a good way to look like well, that's true. That's true. Can't, can't I've never got. Good. They've never got me wet. They've never, never. I've never been soaked through with them. So even on the worst days. So maybe, maybe you've just got the wrong trousers. Yeah. Well, should make a film about that, shouldn't we? I, I, I often go out in the summer with just waterproofs on. I don't wear ordinary trousers. So it, just, because... just waterproof trousers. That's it. Nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just this hurt. But I mean, yeah. it's same as Darren, it, it, they're they're very windproof. If you get a, a bit of a shower, it'll keep you nice and warm and dry. Happy days. 
Why wouldn't you? So, mate, it looks like this is definitely not going in. So, what are we, are we, are we putting this in, guys? Should've no, said, it's definitely it's a not. No, from me. Well, I, I don't wear them, so I've not got a view, so I'll go with the majority of no. Yeah, right. no, sorry, yeah. sorry, man. Sorry, not, mate. They're not they going wanna, in. Want to buy a pair of used? <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to buy two, mate, to fit me. Two pairs and stitch them together. All right, come in, gal. What are you putting in? All right, so this is mine. I've been I've been rehearsing this all week. Right, are you ready? So ready? This, mine's more of a scenario, really, than a than a. Well, it, it's a. I'm going to do a little a little bit of a acting for you, just to describe oh. what I mean. Right, so. So, you ready, right? Just... Okay, okay, right. Hey, guys, what is up, right? Welcome. (laughs) Well, welcome to my new YouTube channel where I'm going to talk to you about five... five photography things that are going to make you a better photographer. Now, I've never taken a picture before, but these are the five things that are going to make you a better photographer. Number one... Hello. You right, Manny? (laughs) Sorry, my kids have just gone berserk. <laughs> Do you need to go sort them out? I no, they're just, agree- they're just agreeing with you, gal. Look, yeah. as soon as Girls! you said... Can you put a sock in it? Or some waterproof pants? <laughs> Josh! Mally, give them five tips on how to behave. <laughs> five <laughs> tips on how to <laughs> shut your kids up. It's five tips to help you become a better photographer. Now, the first thing that you need, you need a camera. Oh, is that? I think that's a camera. Is that? No, no wait. Is that a camera? No, this is a. This is a camera. So you need a camera, and then the second, the second number two, hand over the hand over thing, is you need something to take a photo of. Obviously, you know, like not a wall or something, but a but a lens. That's that's what that's in my room one hundred and one. People. <laughs> essentially who have absolutely no idea about photography trying to give you tips about photography and who are you referring up to pretty much everyone who starts youtube nowadays <laughs> so can i just clarify before we vote is it okay to give you seven tips or is it just five that's a problem well seven's seven is you know probably overkill but you know if, if you're going to give seven then you need to be like a top level blagger really you know you need Got to be you. right up right up there in i really know what i'm talking about honest that sort of level but if, so, if it's, no, joking aside then so are we talking even about the big guys because a no, lot of the no. big guys do do the five seven tips no. ten tips so we're not talking about no. them in all because, honesty in all honesty people who are up there who, who have been on youtube a long time who've been taking photographs for a long time who have won competitions and are respected they've got i've got no issue in fact i, I they're, they're I, qualified in your opinion to give the yeah, tips. yeah and i enjoy them giving me tips yeah. and, and i think i might get something out of that it's the people who have probably never picked up a dslr before or a camera before and they think that oh i know what i'm going to do i'm going to go on youtube and the best way to get views is to give a tips video on the top five tips of how to take a photograph and like literally there was a guy i can't remember what his name was about two or three months back came onto the facebook group that i'm on said i've got a video and how to take selfies and like tip number one was you need to be taking a picture of yourself I mean, <laughs> do you know what I mean? No, uh, tip number two. I remember two, that one. Yeah, tip number I, two. I fell about laughing that time as well. Yeah, tip number two. Make sure that the camera's pointing at you. <laughs> it's like, just that. That for me, it's like, look, I get, I get it, I get it that people want to get onto YouTube, and I get that they want to do that. But you know, it's this whole. There's a whole thing nowadays where people have no idea, no knowledge. Yet they think that they can give, they can, they can tell you what to do with the very little knowledge that they've got, and 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 it just it, it winds me up really badly. There's loads of other things I could have. Do you know when we were talking about this? I was like, I can't think of anything, and then after about ten minutes, I'm like, shit, I've got about twenty five things. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> so, so your issue, your issue isn't necessarily about the five or the seven tips. It's about people that prof- profess to know about photography and to educate people on YouTube about photography but just aren't at the level to be able to be qualified to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I honestly I think I, okay. I honestly think, right, that 
you need to be you you need to be a, a really good photographer before you can start giving people advice on how to take photos. Quite right. I don't look at myself at, as, you know, I've done a couple of videos like how I take panoramas, for instance, but I would never, ever profess to speak, to say that I can tell someone else how to take a photo. I'm not good enough. So if I don't consider myself good enough, then these people who've probably picked up a camera twice, I certainly never would never consider them good enough. And the, and the problem is, is their advice scares people, and it and it it, it 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 gives people the wrong impression of photography. So yeah, that mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah, I I agree with that. I must admit. I mean, I I was very careful since I started my channel, pretty much up until now. I never gave advice because yeah. I thought that's going to come back and bite me on the ass for two reasons, because. The people are going to be looking at me thinking, well, who is this guy? He just started up a YouTube channel. That's going to be one of them. And nine times out of ten, you know, we all take duff photos. If I start saying, oh, you know, kind of what you should do here, da 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 da, and then I show them the photo that I just took and it's a, it's absolutely pants, it's going to make me look like a, a right mm. mug. So, yeah, I, I tend to stay away from telling people what you should do i don't think it's right to tell people what to do anyway but i think it's fine to tell people what you're doing mm, yeah. you know yeah so well, i'm doing this i'm doing that and the reason i'm doing this and my thought process is this yeah it might not come out but this is my my train of thought as i go through this image i think that's fine yeah no i i totally agree i think there's been so many new people come into landscape photography and youtube over the last couple of years and you know i have i've only been on it for what 18 months or so but i think you get to a point where if you're a newcomer to photography and you google landscape photography on youtube and you get all of these loads of videos and there's so many of them that profess to teach you something if they're going to teach you something they need to be qualified to teach you and, yeah. and I think that's the point, isn't it? You can get you can get dragged down to learning something because you've seen it on YouTube and you think, oh, that so-and-so on YouTube, he's a landscape photographer, he told me to do this, so that's got to be right. But all of a sudden then, that person is going to get in a bad habit too early. So if you're going to be teaching something, you really need to be taught by somebody that's qualified to teach rather than just watching somebody that's out taking pictures. And yeah. I'm exactly the same as you, Dan. I think that my videos have always been about my... <laughs> adventures <laughs> on YouTube um, absolutely can't be rather than being out there and telling people how I'm using my camera and the rest of it I'll yeah. tell them sometimes my settings and as you say thought process and my co I guess my compositional thoughts why I'm thinking that particular composition but that's just my view on it that's, yeah, not, telling exactly. them, that's no. not telling them that's how they it, should be thinking it's just exactly. like that's what I'm seeing that's why I'm going to take this picture that's my view that's why um, I'm using these settings. That's yeah, why absolutely. I'm, yeah, exactly. And if yeah. it turns out pants, it turns out pants. Yeah, and if it's a winner, absolutely. it's a winner. Yeah. But yeah, rather than telling someone what to do, I remember watching, uh, this was a couple of years ago, there was this guy who, who, who posted something up on, on YouTube, landscape photography. Um, and by the time I'd watched it, this, this video, I think was about three months old. Um, and it had got less than kind of 100 views. But I watched it and on the video he actually said, you know, I'll try my best to keep up with all the comments. And there was no comments. I actually commented because I felt quite bad that there wasn't any comments. And I just think that someone like that would have obviously probably thought, right, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. I'm going to be the next, you know, Thomas Heaton, Nigel Danson, that kind of stuff. And, and you know, and I think people then try to use a hook or an angle on on how to how to gain more views and dare I say it yeah I, I do agree to a point go I think sometimes the 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 set the five tips or the seven tips are almost like a given sometimes you watch some of the big channels that use them and that is their biggest kind of selling or biggest viewed videos and I think some of the smaller creators jump on the bandwagon mm. far too early and I actually think that the that the larger guys even though you know you you know that I'm a cynic, but the larger guys they've earned the right to post these videos 
because they've gone through that they they have posted and posted and posted and posted and they've shown that they can take a good photo and they've they've you know they've gone through all of that and they're qualified at that point to say here are my top five or my top seven or my top ten tips whereas you get these guys who come in and the problem is with youtube it doesn't distinguish it doesn't say this guy is has got a, a, a Atoll, blue tick certified. Yeah, th this guy's got a blue tick to say that he knows what he's talking about, and this guy doesn't. You just look down a whole list, and it says five tips, five tips, five tips, five tips, and you know five top five tips to take. You know top five caps lock tips to take awesome caps lock landscape photo photographs caps lock, and you look at that, and if you're a, a newbie, a beginner. How do you know? You know, especially because you can hide your subs as well. So, how this guy might this guy's hiding his subs? He might have four, four subscribers, and and how do you know what level he's at? And you're a new guy, and you don't know him from. He might be telling you to I don't know shoot everything at f two point eight to get maximum sharpness, and you're going to sit there and go, right, okay, I need to do that. You know, but it's, yeah, it's just crazy, crazy, crazy. Can I just say, I'm sorry, Gary. That I Why? Jump, I had to jump up. And, <coughs> oh, that's all right. Did, did you? you. It's Jamie's. Jamie's gone <laughs> yeah. now. He's having a battle as well. Oh my but, God. Um, I completely agree with what you're saying about the idea of um, inexperience. <laughs> saying that. <laughs> What's up? What happened then? <laughs> we're sorry, my patio door just blew open. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much strange, and it's not the thirteenth episode. No. We've had that. Yeah. Apologies. It's the it's the perfect the level of professionalism tonight is just getting me <laughs> Off through. Off the scale, yeah. James yeah. is going to yeah. pop up now. Yeah. Let's one, two. Let's make him let's make him appear. <laughs> if he ever does pop up. You know, anyway, well, I think, money, yeah, oh, sorry, go on. Sorry. So, yeah, but saying about, like, there's a certain amount of, uh, like, um, uh, it's not initiation, I can't think of it. It's just life, wisdom, uh, learning, going through a certain amount of, of, of learning. But even then, now, I'm with you, I'm with you, right, but... I know a lot of people who've been to university and can't create a print-ready PDF. And they've got certificates saying that they are educated to the level to teach and they can't do industry standard or basics. They can't actually do certain things like focal process, split, split a job for plates, or they can't, they can't do something to in terms of photography, lighter subject or know how, because a lot of the things that are involved, this is, this is, was my argument. A lot of the things that are involved with being at that level come from experience, not a mm. piece of paper. Mm. Now, if you're a vlogger and you come on, you've got, I've got five, five tips that I'm going to show you. And you've done three vlogs. That's where I think I agree with what you're saying. Is it takes time. I don't think I've ever done an educational video, but I've had people say that I've learned a lot from you. And, and it always blows me away because I think I, I haven't actually been teaching. I haven't actually said anything or done anything to teach you or show you a technique or anything. All I've done is said, I've done this, and here's the pictures I've produced by doing this or standing here in this light and what have you. So the idea behind it, I think, comes down to the fact that if you put a number in a subject, because in vlogging terms, people are looking for a magic formula, and the formula is title, description, thumbnail. Forget everything else. If you get those three spot on, your video will do quite well to a point where it has to be worthy content and worth watching which then the five things, if you put a number in a title, people click on it more than a title that doesn't have a number. Isn't that strange that as you... I, I don't get that, because um, I've put out 148 videos and not once have I gone, which of these words in the title should be in caps? Not once. Yeah, yeah. Not, I, I just, it's just, people sit there and go, mm, I'll capitalise this word. Stand the out. video's still shit. 
It makes no difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's mad though. It's absolutely yeah. mad because if you, you talk about that topic, if you put negative words in your yes. title like hate, yeah. uh, rubbish, terrible, um, fail, uh, idiot, huh? Five fail. words. Fail. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, if you put that in, like my most watched video was called "An Idiot Ruins My Day." Uh, you know, and the idiot turned out to be me, and I knew that it was a little bit clickbaity. Three shares. Yeah, but it's it's crazy how people like the another one that's done really well is I hate every single photo I've taken. You know, and people will watch that because they're like, "Oh, I'm, I'm interested in that." But equally, that's the way that that's the way that a lot of these 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 people they when they first come onto YouTube and they think, "Right, how can I?" I want to. I want to make something of myself. You know, there was this one guy. I'm again. I'm not going to mention his name, and his his whole his whole ethos was, I'm going to I'm going to take you on my photography journey. I don't know anything about photography, and I'm going to take you on my photography journey. And three vlogs in, it was five tips to take better shots of aeroplanes, and you're like, well, wow, okay, well that was quick. You learn quick, but then if you look at if you look at his past <laughs> vlogs. Before this, it was another thing, another niche that he looked at. Like, I don't know, I don't know what it was, but Minecraft or something else. And he thought, "This is how I'm going to get in. This is how I'm going to do it." That didn't work. I'll try photography. Photography seems quite popular, you know. And then you go on to doing something else. So you know how to get. Look at what are the most watched videos? Yeah, what are the most watched videos though? How to get more subscribers? How to get more views? How to do this? People don't cotton on that they're doing that to get the views and the subscribers. They're not going to really right, tell you. So anything. just going back, Gal, to the original question. Yeah. What are you putting in to Room One Hundred and One? I'm putting in in, 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 a, in a sentence. Okay, I'm putting in photographers who try to give you tips when they don't know what they're talking about themselves. Yeah, I'll put them in. Yeah, that that will go in for me. It's going in for me. Yeah, I'm down right. with the gal. I think, <laughs> I think, mate, you you've been most successful tonight. I think Seems you have got your by yeah by uh, majority or unanimous decision. Time. Okay, so I'm going to use uh, a, a golfing analogy before we, uh, we we touch on the subject of, of worst days out. But this is this is what I'm getting at by your worst photography day out. But for me, this golfing analogy was. I queued up for an hour to get onto the first tee. So I was already in a bad mood because it had just taken me forever. I hate queuing anyway. And then I teed off and I, I, me and my friend, we got down to our ball, but then we had to wait because there was people still queuing to chip onto the green because they was waiting for people to leave the green. We finally finished the first hole. We went on to the second hole. It was the same thing. We waited and we waited. So by this time, <clears throat> I've probably been at the course for about an hour and a half, hour and three quarters, and I've not even cleared the second tee. Now, the, the, the third hole is a par three. So now you have to wait for the person who's putting to actually clear. Now I've got the, I've, I've got the whole fairway to myself. What I did, I teed off, I hit the concrete women's marker, my ball ricocheted behind me, so now I was about 30 foot further back than when I started, and I threw my club into my bag, in my trolley, and I just walked off the golf course, leaving my friend, who was still teeing off, he didn't even realise... And I'll just walk back and I had the biggest hissy fit ever. So that I'm just thinking, has anyone had a day with their camera? Perhaps quite not as dramatic as that. But when you've just got there and you just think, do you know what? I, I just don't want to be here today. I, I'm just not feeling it today. Gal? I've, I've had the same golf oh, experience, Mally. by the way. <laughs> yeah. I, I called a fella Clant Clatterbucket in front of me. You did oh, what? Go on. I called the fella Cla Clarence Clatterbucket. <laughs> I was I was quite polite actually, but yeah, I've had the same thing. Go on, Gary. Sorry. I, I played uh, talking about golf really quickly. 
I played a, a, a charity golf day for my cricket club at Luton Who, one of the most, one of like the poshiest golf courses in the area. And honestly, I was so bad. I, call, I, I like to call it regimental golf because it's left, right, left, right, left, right. And I, I walked off after nine. I, I had, I'd had enough. I was like, I am playing so badly. There is no redeeming me here. I walked off after nine. But talking about photography, um, yeah, I, I think I think the most difficult day, the most difficult day that I had, that I've ever had, I, I was, it was about oh, two and a half years ago and it was just after, it was sort of January time and I've, I've, I've always wanted to go and take a shot of Roaches End Farm in the Peak District. So you've got the Roaches and then down the other end of it, you've got this old abandoned farmhouse and I drove up and it was sort of, I can't remember, I left here and it must have been sort of six or seven degrees. And by the time I got anywhere near to the Peak District, it was sort of minus four. And there was all snow, snow on, on the peaks. And I was like, this is going to be really good. And I drove down. I don't know if anyone's been to the Roaches before, but you the, getting to the Roaches isn't too bad. But to get to Roaches End Farm, the sat-nav takes you down all these little windy country lanes. And I got to one particular bit of it where it sort of it sort of does that and loops up and goes over it. And it was I yeah, it was icy and I just the car wouldn't go. I got halfway up it and it slid back down. I tried again and it slid back down. I tried again. And in the end I was like, oh god. And I just I turned round and I thought, right, instead of that, I'm gonna I'm just gonna go somewhere else. So I turned back round and in the end I drove halfway back, stopped off somewhere, took a crappy picture of a of a sort of morning red sky that was all blurred and I just wasn't focusing at all on it. And then just, I think I got sort of, I can't remember where I stopped back off and I just had a McDonald's and then drove home. I was like, I've had enough of this. <laughs> just shocking, <laughs> shockingly bad. And weirdly enough, I actually went back to the Roaches about two weeks later to do the same thing and I had exactly the same problem and ended up driving on to Lumsdale Falls instead and going there. How did you get on at Lumsdale Falls? I wasn't impressed with that at all. Um... I liked it. I like. I did like Lumsdale Falls, but I felt it was all. It's all a little bit manufactured. If yeah. that makes sense, it's not. It's not a natural waterfall. It's all man-made waterfalls, and it, although it's quite nice, it's sort of the. It's very much like it's like blocks, isn't it? Like Lego blocks of of great big yeah. blocks of like uh, rock that sort of just drop down vertically. So. Yeah, it's all right. Not my favourite place. I, I would like to go there again and probably give it another go now I'm two and a half years down the line. But yeah, not my favourite place. Anybody else, gents, that's had a, a, had a rough day behind the camera? I've had lots of fails, but I think the only thing that springs to mind that I could call out was that, and it was actually a vlog I released at the end. Um, I had this idea that you know, you know, you guys know I live in the flat in the fens. It's flat. It's bits. There's not a lot of character to it at the best of times, unless the conditions are right. So, I wanted to do a seascape vlog. I wanted to go to the wash and really show off the, you know, the wash and the and, and the whole expanse of the of, of the flat fens. Is this the third and I went, one? And I, sorry, is this the third one? Yeah, it <laughs> is. And, and I went and I went there. And I turned up and it was like, I don't know, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the morning like that. So there's no light. It was overcast. It was cloudy. It was as windy as hell. It was so windy that day. And I turned up at this place, literally right on the edge of the of the washland. And I looked around and I thought, Jesus, Jam, you're going to really struggle to make something out of this. You know, I know I've got some, a little bit of creativity in me, but this is going to be a struggle. And the wind was coming down and I, I started off my vlog, if, if anybody's ever seen, I was crouched inside this pillbox. And then I decided I'd create a little bit of history, as I do sometimes in my vlogs, and tell people about the history of World War Two in the Fens and, and the rest of it. And that was all well and good. You know, that created, you know, five minutes of content. And then I went up on the bank and went, to have a look at the wash and it is literally just full of mud you know there's nothing there it's just literally flat mud as far as the eye can see and the only thing that made that vlog that actually pushed me to put it out was the fact that while I was up at the top of that bank the wind was so strong 
and I was struggling to hold my camera in front of me and it actually made a little bit of entertaining content that that about 10 seconds of the vlog for me was yeah. the only reason I put it out and, and I really really struggled and I, and I thought to myself Jamie why are you doing this you, you're creating a, a, a video of something that to 99% of the people is going to be dull and boring but I've created it it's gone out and I thought oh, that was a real for me that was a fail but it was something that I thought, no, you shouldn't have done that. In hindsight, you know, seascapes in, in, in the washes isn't really like seascapes that, you know, most photographers want to yeah. take, to be fair. Uh, and, and the turds and the mudflats did the remind turds. me of turds, Gary, hence yeah. why I did call that out as well. <laughs> the thing is, though, it is good to put out your failures because, yeah. it, it you know, you, you don't, people need to know that landscape photography isn't just success after success you know amazing sunrise after amazing sunrise after amazing sun. sometimes you get turds yeah i think even I've got the, turds. Yeah. i think even though when it goes wrong the success is it's just how you you know it's waterproof pants wash me <laughs> wash me i got I got to devote water thinking this is going to be great and the whole day it rained for 24 hours i stayed overnight got drunk um with a lot was that your group one was that the one where you group set up a, a group meeting yeah, yeah. i remember that yeah. oh, i remember it's, that one yeah. you've got you've got like there was 15 people coming and you couldn't even see the mountains you couldn't even see the screes of wash water it was that bad and you've got people that all right they're not paying customers to the people who come on a meet on the Mali meetup, but they, they want something and they got nothing. But do you know, I can't say it was a failure because what happened was we got to know each other and we got waterproof pants didn't work. We got soaked and like Jamie says, it, it was a turd. It was just, it was just horrendous. It was horrendous. Well, I, I know I that when even... I was in, oh, sorry, Mali, got I just don't even know why I, I put that out, and it actually looks like a good. It, it looked like a good time, but it, it it was horrendous. The car wouldn't start. My car broke. Yeah, but that was actually a good story. I like. I remember that video, and, and there's a lot of videos because I watch. We all watch so many that don't stand out. But I must admit that one. Yeah, I do remember that one, I, and that I was just, a good. It was a good story. I'll though. never forget, Mikey. We got there. We got down to the shoreline of Wasswater, and, and the fells <clears> were showing. And I, and I was there getting a shot. And Mikey's like setting up. And within 30 seconds, everything went. And he put a tent stop on and everything took a picture. And it was there was just nothing. It was just a bit of water and foreground and nothing. And he looked at me and went, Landscape Photography of the Year, that one. That's fine art, <laughs> isn't it? That's fine art. It was just unreal. There was no mountains. There was nothing. It was just 10 feet in front of us. And that was it for 24 hours. It was gone. It was completely gone. And it was such a successful um, day. It, 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 but it was disaster. But it, in photography terms, it was tragic. It was bad. Really bad. I don't know if anyone saw that, that video that I did. Um when I was trapped, I was in Wales, trapped in the in in the motorhome um, for for pretty much was it oh, thirty six yeah. hours. Well, I managed to kind of get a vlog out of that, but a couple of days afterwards, um, I was at Coomidwell, and I think because I had kind of like a pretty kind of torrid three days, um, I was desperate, to, you know, to, to to get out, and I, I, I walked up to Coomidwell. And the rain, it was just driving rain. And I remember turning my back to the rain. So it was obviously hitting the back of me just so I could shield my camera. And I remember standing in this position, just standing there, probably for about 15 minutes. And then in the end, I just thought, what am I doing? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I was literally drenched. But I was thinking, oh, it might ease up in a minute. But and, but I think I was so, I just I just wanted to get my camera out. I was just so excited about, you know, just taking some photos. But I think sometimes you just kind of got to know when to call it a day. And that was the day I was all on my own, just standing there with driving rain, just thinking, no, 
This is it. Was that the Give infamous filters week? Was that when you lost your filters? That was the same the same yeah. week, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, for me, I, I, I haven't really had those sort of experiences, but I think it helps. I don't travel very far. So, you know, if I drive for 20 minutes and it's a bust, well, it doesn't really matter. But my I suppose my worst is actually very recent and in fact it's my most recent trip into the mountains Saturday March the 22nd I headed up to Snowdonia and found out that the whole of England was there on the same weekend oh. and it was absolute carnage and I thought to myself well what can I do as an alternative and I thought I know I'll go into the quarry at Dinorwig because it's huge um, your average hill walker doesn't really go round there. What The people you find in Dinorwick are a combination of local people walking their dogs, rock climbers, because there's some really interesting climbs there, and landscape photographers. But there's and Jason Jones. Of, yeah. There's, in, there's enough of it that you tend not to interact with people. So I went right up the far end into the old cutting shed on the top level and I stood in the corner of this shed because it was the only place where I was out of the wind. I was already fed up because I thought I was going to have a nice hike. And I, the writing was on the wall. We were going to get locked down two days later. Oof. So I'm in the corner of this cutting shed, the only place I can get out of this biting wind. And I opened a vlog. Now, one of the things I'm pretty good at is opening a vlog, set the camera up, hit record, talk. Not a problem. 20 takes later, I oh. almost kicked my tripod down the shed <laughs> with the camera still on it. And I took four images, actually all four of which I'm quite pleased with. But the vlog never got beyond, you know, 20. Uh, Hello and welcome to the vlog and faff. <laughs> <laughs> Some swearing. <laughs> and, I, and I went home and I, I, I can remember driving across the bridge thinking... I don't know when I'll be back off the island. Oh. And I'm sat here now, yeah. 14 weeks on, and I haven't been off the island since. So it yeah. was almost prophetic. But that said, you know, I can go somewhere next week, so life isn't too bad and all my loved ones are okay, and that's the main thing. Yeah. So, uh, But yeah, as, as disasters go, that's as close as I've ever got to one, and it wasn't really a disaster. <laughs> no, I mean I've got I don't know you guys, but I mean I've been to somewhere, especially like in say in in the woodland, which I, I kind of do struggle a little bit with kind of woodland photography. And I've gone out and you know, I'm just not, you know, whether I just haven't got the eye for it or I just you know, but I've 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 just really struggled at times, you know. Especially I think if you are vlogging as well, it, it doesn't it doesn't help. I think perhaps with woodland is to what Owen. Clark is, I think, is very good at. He does actually because he's got a dog, so he does do a lot of dog walking. And um, I think he will actually go and just look at a composition a few times, go back there, and then sit in different light, and then he'll make a vlog on it. And I think that's the the way to do it sometimes because I've been out and I've just got so frustrated, you know, be like the golf club incident where I just think, mm. I just, I just can't do it. I just, I just can't do it. I just want to go home now. I think there's, too def frustrating. there's definitely something to be said for scouting yeah. locations yeah. if if it's feasible. You yeah. know, that definitely because sometimes you go like most of the stuff I do is sort of I, I go and I hope to strike it lucky really because you go that that kind kind of why I tend to go some to places where people have already been. Because you, you, you sort of you, you kind of know that at least there are some compositions around there. Uh, but locally, I mean I, I remember going to Woburn, uh, Forest in Woburn, and I love I ever since I was a kid, I love sort of pine trees, tall, straight, angular, mm. you know, perpendicular pine no, perpendicular, parallel, parallel, not perpendicular, it's like that, isn't it? Parallel pine trees. I, I love I love looking at pine trees. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> is that yeah. a rave? Was it big fish, little fish, cardboard box? Um, no, I, lo I love looking at those real sort of straight lines of, of pine trees. And Woburn 
it's just that's just pine tree heaven you know it's really straight sort of angular trees and um they had bluebells there as well and i thought well, i can't go wrong can't go wrong here turned up to do a vlog and i, I just couldn't find anything N not a single shot in the end the one shot i got out of it was like i think i turned it red sort of this really sort of like i don't know red i don't know why i did that but it was awful so i didn't even i ended up just i started i did a vlog did the whole vlog got home and went there's not a single shot here that i can that i can take and i've been back there several times actually to try and sort of think well have i missed something but no it turns out i didn't there's nothing there you see there's two things you said there that uh, gary about um about going somewhere where there's a composition yard you know and 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 going somewhere that you've you've you said oh uh, Owen Clark where you've scoped it out. The biggest thing for me is that not knowing, mm. like to just go yeah. out, yeah. to just go yeah. out like Monk's yeah. Wood local in Billinge is just um, thirty oak trees and two ponds, dig pits with some burnt out car wheels. I was laughing because mm. have, have you ever uh, the chemical beach or the the wheels the wheels yes are, yeah chemical yeah, beach yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I was laughing to myself because looking at these burnt out wheels and thinking should I pick them up and put them in this bog <laughs> and take a picture of my my wheels in the sea but it's not in the sea it's in a stagnant bog surrounded by oak trees and I just I, going out not knowing not planning and picking possibly the worst places possible sometimes for me is such fun because I think personally I'm, I'm, you can't you all call me a bit of like Tigger is I don't think it matters with me because I get so excited to just be somewhere with camera mm. And mm. see stuff that is just to most probably quite mundane. So mm. I've got two. To me, the last vlog I've done is could be a failure. It, it, but then again, I, I thought Formby Point was going to be a failure, and that proved me wrong. I, I, I get. I, I completely get your point, Mally, on um, on when you're talking about like su being surprised by something. But I think that if you if you're going local great but if you spent a lot of money on petrol and a lot of time to get to somewhere you I'd, i'm all for exploring but i would like to go somewhere where i know there's at least something that i can get out of it do you know never, what i mean never do no. never have. you see i've I, i've always been like even like a holiday i like going to the same place on holiday twice because i always find the second time i go to a place I get more out of it because I've already done like the exploring and then I'll go back and then I'll do like the fine tweaking so to speak and it's a little bit like that with photography for me if I go to a location just the once I'll come back and I'll put my images up on the big screen and I think oh if I would have just kind of step back a little bit or move that little bit to the right I could on a 27 inch monitor I can see so much more so I do enjoy going back there the second time because I've almost done some scouting. It doesn't doesn't happen very often, especially because I have to travel to Snowdonia or the Lake District, so I don't get the luxury of just popping back there. But I wish I did. I wish I could just go to a place, scout it, look at it, take the images, come back, and then go back again and, and fine tweak it. How that, many, oh, go on, how sorry, many times have you said that, or has any of us said that, that you go to a location and you think the conditions aren't right now for this but I'm definitely coming back when the conditions are right. And do you ever actually go back when the conditions are right? I've, I've seen that not just in our videos, but lots of people where they say, this would be great if it had mist or this would be great yeah. if it had a sunset over that direction and the rest of it, if the light was right. And I think we all we all go out there on the basis that it would be really good to come back, but how many of us actually do go yeah. back to those locations? But that's back yeah, again that's about point, that Joe. preconceived idea in your head and you get somewhere and it's not the conditions. And then I, sometimes I think it's all about being in the moment. I've been places and thought, 
oh, if this had fog or if this had mist or whatever, and then get totally wrapped up in the place and think, oh, I'll come back there. And I have gone back, but the point I'm making is like you're saying, Jimmy, you think, oh, I'll come back. But the moment, the moment you're there, it's the moment, it's the tree, the fauna, the smell, the environment. It could be anywhere. About going miles in the Lake District and, and you think you, you need to have something to put your flag in and go, right, I'm going doing this here. I reckon all week I've spent all week working out where I'm going to go next. And I've come back to the same place where I think, I've, I'm just going. Don't, I'm not even going to plan it. I've got View Ranger. I've got my maps. <clears throat> Sod it. Whatever. All you need is some waterproof trousers. Mm. Oh, well, a, bo- Pants a bottle of go. water and my undies. Just my undies. <laughs> and I'm aware. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Do, do, you find, though, do, do you find, though, that... You, you you naturally gravitate to places like when I when I when I go to Wales I I, I, I don't it's not a purposeful thing I always end up in the Ogwen Valley because I just I love it there and I just every time I go there because there are specific shots that people take of the Ogwen Valley like the house that well, no not the house what is it the, the boat the boat hut thing oh yeah with the tree and then they take the um, the <clears throat> glitters you know, in front of, you know, Clinid Wall, and they take the big waterfall that's sort of, you know, at the foot. But if you walk down that, that, that little, str- it's not, it's not Affoncleur, is it, Dave? No, it's just a, yeah, I know that now. It's just a, it's just a, a, a tributary of, of Clinid Wall. If you walk down there, there's just shot after shot after shot after shot after shot of just stuff that, that no one else takes. There's some yeah. fantastic stuff yeah. there. Beautiful yeah. stuff. Yeah. But the, but that's the point though. It's going back to that place that's probably you know a lot of a lot of the shots there would be maybe classed as honeypot shots because the glitters one that you know there's a load of rocks in the foreground at you know on Clint Edward with the glitters in the background. Everyone takes that, and there's this you know everyone takes that boathouse in front of. But there's so much more there that if you just take the time you know i'd imagine like someone like dave who gets the opportunity to go back there again and again and again the more you go the more shots you find there but you it's, wouldn't when you first go there you go you you you're drawn to those honeypot shots not because they are the honeypot shots but because they're probably the most obvious compositions for photographers and maybe so, being a goldfish like me helps because i don't go to the place so, for instance, I've been somewhere where Charlie Waite shot a tree and I didn't know Charlie Waite had shot a tree. And everyone's probably looking at me and going, you're shooting Charlie Waite's tree. And I'm like, what? Because I don't know Honey Pots, because I don't know the place, I go there and make me own my... So you're saying about have a wander. It's all a wander for, to me. Six seconds later, I'm, I'm happy again. And my memory of remembering and going to somewhere and sticking to a, I'm going to go there because everyone goes there and put your tripod in, and then you wander off where, you know, like you say, you discover. Everything to me is a discovery. I went to Crummet Water and, and didn't know about, I, I, so I, I don't really, <laughs> I don't really look at other photographers as in the big, big people a lot i don't really look at other people i i enjoy other people's photography but but what i mean is i don't look at let me say the famous shots famous people so i get there and i'm overwhelmed and i'm excited and i'm amazed and, and people are probably watching my vlogs going fucking hell mate he's what's wrong with you everyone knows everyone's been there and i'm like i've not i don't know it I don't, it's new, it's new to me. It's Mm. fresh. And then you do it and you take your own idea and composition, you move on and you're adventuring, you discover. Like the three trees at Crummet Water were like, oh, this is just amazing. And then I got back and everyone was like, yeah, everyone shoots that. Well, well, it's been a, it's been a fantastic talk uh, tonight. No, James though, James did not turn up. What, what, what happened? I'm, well, you know, we quite... did actually put him into room 101 yep. just yeah. before we started recording. Mm. Yeah, I'm quite, Accidentally quite... Yeah, it's, a, it's a shame he wasn't here. James, honestly, mate, you know, with all the jokes and that, you have been missed and, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a shame you, you haven't been here tonight and it has, hasn't been the same without you, so... Uh, no, absolutely. You know, roll on next week when you're back. But um, listen, thanks to 
you know, thanks everyone for watching and, and listening. Can I just say so, mate? Just before just before we go, sorry. I know um, that um, Gareth Danks, who's obviously quite kind of like you know big on YouTube, his Litlan is quite poorly at the moment. So I just like to say, I, I, you know, from, from behalf of all of us, uh, absolutely hope he makes yeah. a, a very speedy yeah, recovery. Yeah. Bless yeah, him. Good chap. Yeah. Yeah. Best, uh, best, best wishes. wishes. So, best wishes to yeah, Gareth best wishes, and your family mate, and, and your Litlan and. We, absolutely yeah we really yeah, hope that, you know like you said speedy recovery so yeah yeah no, a, good shout 100 percent. um yeah absolutely so on that note um thank you so much for watching and thanks for listening and uh and uh yeah we'll see you all next week hopefully with a full compliment so see you later bye bye cheers, cheers. Bye-bye. cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.